ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله جل وعلا وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد we continue in sha Allah ta'ala this class is a wednesday reading from the book tanbih al afham the explanation of umrah al ahkam by his eminent shaykh al allama الشيخ محمد بن صالح العثيمين رحمه الله تعالى لا زلنا في كتاب الصلاة We still in the book of the prayers This is a long book The book of the prayers We're still in the book of the prayers The last chapter was huh? No, it was about the Jumu'ah the Jumu'ah Salatul Jumu'ah about the, the bad that the Shaykh explained the ahadith, the narration that dealt with the, the Friday service sermon, Jumu'ah and the like rulings and regulations tonight inshallah ta'ala the chapter that came right after that one is Bab Salatul Eidain the prayers the, the two Eid prayers Today, inshallah ta'ala, tonight is the chapter that deals with the two Eid prayers. There is five narrations in this chapter. Five narrations. The first narration is the narration of Hadith ibn Umar. And then the Hadith of Al-Bara ibn Azib. Number three, the Hadith of Jundub ibn Abdullah al-Bajali. Number four, the Hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah. And then lastly, the narration of Ammu Atiyya Nusayb al-Ansariya. Before we go to the first uh, narration tonight of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, and which is going to be the 138, the narration number 138 after all, from the beginning of this, of this book. But the Shaykh, rahimahullah ta'ala, he wants to, I wanted to read to you uh, an explanation a brief explanation by the Shaykh Muhammad bin Salih al-Thaymeen what is the two Eids when you hear the Eid the two Eids what is intended by these two قال المراد بالعيدين عيد الفطر من رمضان وهو أول يوم من شوال وعيد الأضحى وهو العاشر من ذي الحجة he said what is intended what is intended by the, the Eid, the two Eid, the two Eid said one of them is Eid al-Fitr. Eid al-Fitr, which is the breaking of the fast. The Eid that brings end to the fasting of the month of Ramadan. Bringing end to the, to the month of Ramadan. And what, it, it comes up after the 29th. Day or the 30th day? 
not before the 28th, the 29th, not after the 30th. That because they can't, the month, the Arabic month, is, is uh, whether 29 or 30. There is no such thing 28, no such thing 31 days in these months. And that's the first day of Shawwal. Huh? Any month. They are whether 29 or 30. They could not be 28, they could not be 31 days. And that's the first day of Shawwal, because the Shawwal is the month that comes after Ramadan. Shaban, Ramadan, Shawwal. Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah. Muharram, Safar, and we are in Rabi' al-Awwal. We are on Rabi' al-Awwal tonight. Today is the second. Tayyip. Our Eid al-Adha, the other Eid, Eid al-Adha, the Eid of Sacrifice, in what day it comes, we follow? On? Tenth, the tenth day of the Hijjah, the last month, n- month number twelve in the Arabic calendar, the Hijjah. The Sheikh now he said, "Summi yaidaini, لأنهما يعودان ويتكرران كل عام." They were given this name Eid because they are repeated every year. Eid. That's why Eid because it's repeated constantly. Every year we have these two Eids. That's why they were given that name. They got that name of Eid because this is something that repeated every year. Every year it's repeated. وَكُلٌّ مِنْهُمَا مُرْتَبِطٌ بِعَمَلٍ جَلِيلٍ وَرُكْنٍ مِنْ أَرْكَانِ الْإِسْلَامِ and both of them, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, both of them is connected with a righteous action. Is connected to a righteous action, and rather the, right, the righteous action is a pillar from the pillars of Islam. Is a pillar from the pillars of Islam. For Eid al-Fitr, مرتبطن بسيام رمضان. So, the Eid al-Fitr is connected with the fasting. That's a righteous action. And that's a pillar, because it's not any fasting, it's a fasting of the month of Ramadan. Which is fasting in the month of Ramadan, is a pillar from the pillars of Al-Islam. وَعِيدُ الْأَرْحَى مُرْتَبِطٌ بِمَادَ And what is the connection that Eid Al-Adha is, is connected with? Hajj, because it falls on Hajj. The Shaykh said, as for Eid Al-Adha, is connected with the Hajj. Hajj بيت الله الحرام. وَالتَّقَرُّبْ إِلَيْهِ بِذَا الْحَرْقُرْبَانِ Whereas Muslims in that period of the year they get they seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the slaughter, by slaughtering his animals. And in both and in each one of them, Eid al Fatr and Eid al Adha, it is a prayer. There is a prayer that is specific to them, unlike the other prayers. This is a prayer that is specific to them, and vicar remembrance of Allah and supplications and invocations. And also admonishment and a sermon that serve as a guidelines to the community of the Muslims that they gather upon them. فَيَحْصُلُهُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَإِجَابَتِهِ وَمَغْفِرَتِهِ مَا فِيهِ سَعَادَتُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَآخِرَةِ So by them acting upon this, they will receive from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also this is a, an opportunity for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their dua and their supplications and Allah forgive their sins which brings about happiness to their life in this life of, the, of this war, and yet the happiness in the hereafter. كما يحصل لهم من الفوائد الاجتماعية والصلات الأسرية والصلات. That was salat. Salat. تعرف؟ Salat. Salat. Connections. والصلات الأسرية والأخوية والفرح والسرور ما تطيب به أوقاتهم وتزكو به أعمالهم. He said, add to that the many many benefits that they will receive and gain being uh, 
as the, as the members of one community because since they gather all of them together in one spot on the Eid and they met one another they pray together they supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they meet one another so that strengthen strengthen the, 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 the ties between them the ties of uh, of uh, brotherhood of sisterhood and the like between them which bring about joy happiness which bring joy and happiness and this is something that's experienced we see on the day of the Eid, people are happy, alhamdulillah, and uh, they look happy, at least see them happy, smiling, everybody is happy. And he said, so therefore they spend good times, at least those times, and then through these activities, they reflect upon the ways that uh, make them purify themselves, and, and also their actions, and their actions. ومن أجل تمام الفرح والسرور وشموله للمجتمع كله إن شاء الله تعالى بحكمته ورحمته في هذين اليومين ما به مواساة الفقراء وسد حاجاتهم. And he said, and so for this joy and this happiness to be completed and to be comprehensive and to touch the whole of the community, not just certain people be happy, but everybody should be happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated out of his wisdom and mercy Allah has legislated in these two days of Eid that which uh, serve as muwasat for the needy and the poor people meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated certain things that the people should do in these two days and by doing so they will uh, help out the needy and the poor and they will uh, show some consideration to those people who are in need ففي عيد الفطر الفطر شرع او شرع زكاة الفطر تدفع للفقراء وفي عيد الاضحى شرع الاضاحي والهدايا للاكل والاهداء والصدقه كما قال تعالى في سوره الحج فكلوا منها واطعموا البائس الفقير he said that is in عيد الفطر what is the day for us the muslims is to pay zakat al-fitr is to give out zakat al-fitr for the poor people and the needy so they can be happy too so then once they receive that thing alhamdulillah and they use it and they are happy because they receive that gift and that zakat and in ila al-adha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated another act of worship which is the slaughtering of the animals to eat and to give gifts as well a gift, ya akhwan, that, that lamb is not just for you. It was, it was legislated for this reason, remember? It's for the happiness for the whole community, not just you and your wife and children are happy. No, that, so therefore, to, to uh, a portion of that lamb or that whatever, the seventh of the camel or the seventh of the cow, that you, that's your share, that supposed to go to the poor people, and a portion of it is supposed to go to your, fa- to your friends and, and the like as a gift so that everybody is happy because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the verse 28 in Surah Al-Hajj فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا so therefore eat from that sacrifice meaning the, of the Eid Al-Adha وَأَطْعِمُ الْبَائِسَ الْفَقِيرِ and give from it and feed from that to from the same sacrifice the needy and the poor the needy and the poor. This is ayah 28 in surah 22. قال وأعقل المؤلف صلاة الجمعة بصلاة العيد ليربط بين الأعياد الشرعية الثلاثة عيد الأسبوع وهو يوم الجمعة وعيد الفطر وعيد الأضحى. And then the Shaykh he, uh, he said that there is a reason why the muallif, why the compiler, al hafid al alim Abu Muhammad Abd al Ghani ibn Abd al Wahid al Maqdis rahimah Allah who compiled this book, Umr al ahkam the compiler of these ahadith and these narrations in Umr al ahkam he said there is a reason why he brought this chapter of the Eid prayers right after the, the Jumu'ah prayer. Why is that? Somebody know? He could have brought something else in here, Janaza, Kusuf, 
okay? Three fasting days? Ah, no. No, son. No, that's what it is. The Sheikh said, it's not a coincidence that he just brought this chapter. No. He said he wrote them straight after the Jumu'ah to show that there is three Eids as legislated to us, three festivals that is legislated for us in Islam. There is the first festival that he, he repeated itself once a week, which is Jumu'ah, when the Muslims meet, supposedly meet in one place. And then these two Eids where the Muslims supposedly meet together. قال إذ ليس في دين الإسلام عيد شرعي سواها لا عيد ميلاد ولا عيد معراج ولا عيد اتصال ولا عيد جلوس على عيد جلوس على كرسي الملك أو الرئاسة. إذا صدر فوق there is no other legislative عيد and festivities in Islam other than this three: the جمعة, the day of the جمعة, and عيد الفطر and عيد الأضحى. There is no such the festivities other than this three. No birthday parties, mm. no mi'raj. Some people, some Muslims, they celebrate the mi'raj, the, the, the night journey and the ascension of the Prophet ﷺ. There is no such thing, uh, Independence uh, Day in Islam, or uh, the victory, or celebrate some victory, or celebrate some defeat, or like the, the king, because in some Muslim countries, when the king or the, or the ruler or the president become nominated, they celebrate that day. If he's nominated, for example, I remember when I was a kid, the, the king back home, he was uh, nominated as a king on the March the 3rd. So every March 3rd of every year is a big thing in, back then. Since he died, his son, now he, he, he was on. Now they changed that day. And after that, many other things that, that are not from Islam. He said, فَكُلُّ عِيدٍ اتُّخِذَ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سِوَى أَعْيَادِهِ الثَّلَثَ فَهُوَ عِيدٌ بِدْعِي نِدَّ لِلْأَعْيَادِ الشَّرْعِيَّةِ so, so therefore, any other festivities or other Eid or feast that it is taken in Islam beside this three, in Jumu'ah, Eid al-Fatr and Eid al-Adha is an innovation. Is an innovation and go against these three uh, Eid that are legislated to us in al-Islam. قال ولهذا ثبت في صحيح البخاري I'm still on that introduction. فلهذا ثبت عند صحيح البخاري في صحيح البخاري عن عائشة رضي الله عنها في قصة الجارتين اللتين تغنيان تغنيان عنها بما تقاولت به الأنصار يوم بعاث وذلك في يوم عيد فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن لكل قوم عيدا وهذا عيدنا. He said that's why it is found in Sahih al-Bukhari from on the authority of Aisha رضي الله عنها in the story of the two neighbors of hers. She has two neighbors who they were chanting while they were with her in her house. They were chanting uh, some something, an expression that the Ansar they used to say. They used to say, and that was in the day of the Eid. That was in the day of the Eid, and the Prophet Sallallahu he said, every people they have their own Eid, but this is our Eid. And every nation they have their own Eid, their own festivities, but this is ours. وهذا ظاهر في اختصاص المسلمين بأعيادهم وغيرهم بأعيادهم He said this is a clear proof that the Muslims have specific Eids for them and the other people have their own have their own وروى ابن حبان والنسائي بإسناد عن أنس رضي الله عنه قال قدم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المدينة ولهم يومان يلعبون فيهما فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم قد أبدلكم الله بهما خير منهما يوم الفطر ويوم and also the Shaykh, in conclusion of this brief introduction on what is the intended by the two Eids, he said, Ibn Hibban and An Nasai, Allah, they brought this narration with the chain of Isnad, the chain of narration that is uh, Sahih, authentic, 
from Anas radiallahu anhu that he said, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Medina, in the Hijrah, in the Hijrah came to Medina, the people of the Medina, they have two days. They had two days that they used to set joy and play and festivities and the like. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, Allah has exchanged these two days with two others that is better than them. Al-Fatr wa al-Adha. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has exchanged, has exchanged and substitute, substitute these two, these two days for you with two others that is way better than them. The Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fatr and Eid al-Adha. Or the day of Fatr and the day of Adha. And the Shaykh is said, since the Prophet says to them, Allah has exchanged and substitute these two days with other two, he said, you know that the substitute and that which be being substituted, they will never gather on time. Is it understood? Madiun, you're a teacher, right? Or you're a substitute teacher? Ah, you're a substitute teacher. So meaning that you and the teacher that you substitute for being in the same classroom? Huh? Unless if you have no words of your so you can't, right? Because if you substitute for someone, meaning he cannot be there. So that's the same thing. Ayyib. So now, inshallah ta'ala, Jazahullah rahimallah shaykh for these clarifications. Now we go to the first narration, inshallah ta'ala. Al-Hadith al-Awwal, the first narration. Narration of who? Because I mentioned. Huh? Ibn Umar. Which one? Salih? Abdullah. Because Omar has other sons. Tayyip. Abdullah ibn Omar radiallahu. And who? Yes, Omar has other sons. No? Eleven? Yes, you say. Yes, sir. Go ahead. It's okay to say something, I think. It's all right. Yeah, but. Insha'Allah, Jakallah khair. Akhwan, I want you to. Uh, uh, to understand one thing, you are right. You have a right to say something. It's not one man standing here. Yes, I'm reading the book. Alhamdulillah. But you, if you don't understand something, I made a mistake. Those days are over. Seventies and early eighties, whatever. One man standing. Whatever he said is right. Those days are over. I want you to pay attention. I may. I may be thinking somewhere else. I may think that I'm saying something right. That's why, alhamdulillah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me stick to the point and to the book. Yeah. So, inshallah ta'ala, you have the right to, to talk, but not any kind of type of talk, though. <laughs> not like anything, no. What, raise your hand. Now, what about if a, if a brother, man, he's kicked out from his house by his wife? No, we don't fail. we don't salat al eid. She got something is going no no khul no divorce, none of them. That's another time, inshallah. Okay? Tay. So you, you still want to say something for her? Okay, tay, alhamdulillah. So the first narration, as brother Abu Damir said, is the narration of Abdullah ibn Umar. Is the narration of Ibn Umar precisely Abdullah? Ayyib. Who said, Kan al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa Abu Bakr wa Umar yusallun al Eidaini qabla al Khutba. Rawah al Bukhari bi raqam 920, Bab al Khutba bad al Eid, wa Muslim bi raqam 888, Kitab salat al Eidain. On the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, and we say radiallahu anhuma on both of them, because him and his father, they were from both companions. Ayyib. Who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr and Umar, meaning his father, they used to perform the Eid prayers, whether Fitr or Adha, before the Khutbah. Before the sermon, unlike Jumu'ah, Friday there is a khutbah first, then the prayer. 
اس حدیث کو لکھ دو امام البخاری اور امام مسلم الراوی عبداللہ ابن عمر بن خطاب رضی اللہ عنہما سبقت ترجمتو دا نرائیدر اف دس حدیث از عبداللہ ابن عمر بن خطاب رضی اللہ عنہما his biography has preceded unless if someone wants to know something about Abdullah ibn Umar we can say something but his biography has preceded or already somebody wants to hear something about him okay Mawdu al-Hadith what is Hadith is talking about who have an idea no okay we have somebody else huh? okay the ahkam all the ahkam on the salat ah, on the, the ahkam on the day of the Eid okay. what's this hadith may be about I'm going to say it again Abdullah ibn Umar because why I'm doing this because I want you to think because why you thinking, Alhamdulillah, because Allah gave us the intellect to use it. This is the hadith. I'm not saying give me the, uh, the meaning of it. Let's say what, what do you understand from this hadith? What this hadith deal with? And this way, if you agree with the shaykh, Alhamdulillah, that's going to make you happy. You're going to say, Allah Akbar, Alhamdulillah, man, shaykh, got something to come. Okay, plus the tobe, he wear a tobe, we wear a tobe. But this is the real thing here. So Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr and Umar, they used to perform the Eid prayer before khutbah. So what is the, what this hadith is dealing with? This audio file has been recorded and distributed by salavitapes.com. Both. Okay, same thing. The Sheikh said, Bayan al Asbaq min al Salat wal Khutbah fil Eidain. The Hadith deals with what takes place before the other, the Eid or the Khutbah. It's right there. Kanu yusallun al Eidain. They used to pray the, the, the prayer before Khutbah. That's right there. It's in the Hadith. What comes first, the Eid or the Khutbah? Alhamdulillah, you were close. You were around the bush. So you didn't get right in it. Next time, try to get in. Inshallah. <laughs> you can't just run around the bush, man. Tayyip. As Abu Bakr and Umar, since they are mentioned, radiallahu anhumah, their biography has proceeded. Their biography has proceeded. Now, here's the other question. Why? Abdullah ibn Umar mentioned them. He could just say the Prophet ﷺ used to pray before the khutbah on the Eid days. Why he add Abu Bakr and his father Umar to, to, the, to, the, to, to the narration now. No doubt, no doubt. But that's not the reason. <laughs> No doubt they were rightly guided. Zakallah khair. But that's not the reason. You're right. That's not still not the, the thing. Now. Now, but still not the right answer. And still the same thing, but is it, since you, since you've been talking about the hukum, that has something to do with the hukum, with the ruling. No, I saw you all. No. Yeah, no doubt. I'm talking about the hukum, the rule. Yeah. 
Do I look at you? Or I forget to smile. No, I have yet. Huh? Talking about the shock of the ruling. I should not be changed. Why? Are you, are you getting close? No. Ahsan, you're close. You're close, but maybe you 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 stumble on the bush. <laughs> but you still didn't get in. <laughs> The Sheikh said, وَفَائِدَةُ فَائِدَةُ مِنْ لَبِنِفِتْ وَفَائِدَةُ لِكْرِهِمَا يعني أبو بكر وعمر بيان أن الحكم لم ينسخ لم ينسخ وأنه سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وخريفة فيه رضي الله عنه He said that the benefit why Ibn Umar he mentioned along with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentioned Abu Bakr and Umar to prove that this ruling was not abrogated. Was not. If he was abrogated, Abu Bakr and Umar would not act upon something that is abrogated. But since they act upon it after the death of the Prophet Wasallam, that shows that their ruling is taking place. Like you said, will not be changed. And therefore it's not abrogated. As you know that there is some narration that's been abrogated by others and the like. You know the Nasif al the, the the narrations that have been abrogated, some some ayats, huh? طيب. So that's why. Al-Sharh al-Ijmali, the general explanation of this hadith, because I will remind you that Shaykh Muazzamin, he has a pattern in this. First he will give you the narrator, who's the narrator give a brief biography, then he give you the, the title or what this narration is about, he explained the wordings which we skipped, and then we, we bring, I use the wordings myself to understand better the hadith and the narration. And uh, then he will bring, if there is other companions or other men in the narration that I mentioned, he will give you who are they, uh, some brief biography. If he already did, he will uh, uh, tell you that their biography has proceeded in the hadith number such and such and then he will bring the, the, the general explanation of the hadith and he, and he ends it with the benefits the points of benefits that were taken and derived from the hadith and sometimes if there is a khilaf, if there is something shubha, doubtful matter he will, he will do that as well and that's a, that's a good minhaj Instead, to the Shaykh, just come and say, this hadith is about this and this. But see, it's easy when you break it down, step by step, point by point. That's beautiful because it makes you not only benefit much, but everything in its order. It's like you have a closet. It's different when you have a closet and you have different uh, shelves and different places and cabins, whatever it is, and boxes. This for paper, this for underwear, this for socks, this for jackets, this, the jackets are hanged in here. You know, understand? It's not like when someone just opens the door and throws everything in there. He's looking for a birth certificate, you gotta go through socks, underwear, jackets, <laughs> whatever it is. No, but if someone is organized, he wants a birth certificate, he don't care about the clothing department. He's gonna go straight to the section where the papers are. So this is, I just want to give that example. I like the way that this book is and the Shaykh Nuhasimeen rahimahu wa ta'ala. May Allah reward him in the Firdaus Amin. He said here, يُخْبِرُ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنِ عُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا أَنَّ سُنَّةَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ وَخَلِيفَتَيْهِ أَبِي بَكْرُ وَعُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا أَلْبَدَاءَ بِصَلَاتَيِ الْعِيدِ أَلْبَدَاءَ بِصَلَاتَيِ الْعِيدَيْنِ قَبْلَ خطبتهما. In this narration he said that Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma is informing us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his two khalifa, uh, Abu Bakr and Umar, his two rightly guided khalifs after him, in this order, Abu Bakr and Umar, 
they used to began with the prayer the Eid prayer before the khutbah okay they used to begin with the Eid prayer before the khutbah وَقَدْ اسْتَمَرَّ and the khutbah is the sermon that we mentioned the khutbah means the sermon that is given by the imam the khatib uh, to as serve as a guidelines admonishment and reminder for the people قَالْ وَقَدْ اسْتَمَرَّ الْعَمَرُ عَلَى ذَلِكْ حَتَّى جَاءَ مَرْوَانِ فَخَرَجَ وَخَطَبَ قَبْلَ الصَّلَاةِ And this was the same pattern, not only Abu Bakr and Umar, but Uthman and Ali and other of them, until the time of Marwan, one ruler named Marwan. He came and he gave the khutbah before the salat. The ruler, he gave the khutbah before the salat. فَأَنْكَرَ عَلَيْهِ أَبُوْ سَعِيدِ so Abu Sa'id, perhaps Al-Khudri, because he was from the young, the youth among the Sahaba. So he refuted him and told him that this is not how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his rightly guided Khalifa used to do. Rather, the Salat first in the Khutbah. So what is Marwan excuse? He said, إِنَّ النَّاسَ لَا يَجْلِسُونَ لَنَا بَعْدَ الصَّلَةِ بَعْدَ الصَّلَةِ فَجَعَلْتُ وَقَبَ الصَّلَةِ his excuse was, people do not sit after the prayer to listen, so I want to make them sit, so I give the khutbah before the salah. Okay? So he said, his excuse was, that people do not sit after the prayer, they leave. So now we give them, we give a sermon before the prayer, so they can sit. Fawaid al-Hadith, the Shaykh, uh, lastly, the, the benefits of this Hadith, the Shaykh mentioned two benefits. Awalan, yeah, give us two benefits. Let's try to get the benefits. Where do you find this in this heaven? Where? Show me the narration. <laughs> That's a benefit from another hadith. Now we're talking about the benefits in this hadith. <laughs> What brother? Is he, he's a brother now? <laughs> okay, Akhwan. Now, nah, you're right, but that's not related to this hadith. Ah, sons, sons. That's one. What is the other one? That you should join the good and forbid the evil? That's in the hadith? No, listen. We're not taking the, nar- the benefits from the general explanation. <laughs> so remember we want the benefits from the hadith not benefits from the biography of the author or from the general explanation because sometimes the shaykh in a general explanation he may bring a story here a reason there but not just benefits from the hadith itself. The difference between the, the, the two Eid cases. The Eid of Jumu'ah and the Eid of Jumu'ah. There was no mention of the Jumu'ah in the hadith. What was the hadith? Who reminds us of the hadith? Yeah, that's the narrative of the hadith. The narrative of the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar. What did he say? Who remembers? Mm-hmm. On the Eid. That's the hadith. It's simple. Who can repeat it? Ahsan. No. Who can repeat this? No, 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 no.
Okay, I know. Yes. Okay, fix it too. Yeah. At least do something. Fix it too. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> that you can do. That you can do, right? Okay. <laughs> now, Akhmad. Ahsan. That's it. The same the same narration. Okay, now from this one, what is the benefit? The first one the Shaykh he mentioned, Mashru'iyat Salat al Eidain wal Khutwa. Laha. That the praying and the Eid prayer is legislated. You gotta understand this. If someone can say to you, why why have to pray the Eid? It's legislated for us. Because the Prophet did it and Abu Bakr and Umar and Nas after that. And the khutbah too, if the some say, okay, the, the, the salat is legislated, what about the khutbah? Said so two. Where? Taken from this hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar. Second two, as the brother mentioned, mahallu al-khutbah fiha ba'da salat. That the khutbah on the Eid, on the Eid, the day of the Eid, come after the salat, not before the salat. Tayyip. We will leave it with this inshallah because uh, we don't have enough time for Salat al-Isha and if we open this, uh, start this narration we may not be able to finish it inshallah ta'ala. We will leave it for the next Wednesday. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Shalallah ila ila anta. Astaghfirullah wa Anything that uh, is not clear for you, something that you want to say? No. No. No, 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 no. Not obligated. Abrogated. Yes, abrogated. Abrogated. No. Not obligated. No, it's not abrogated. My accent. Anything? Anything, Yahwan? Abrogated meaning that the, the ruling is not taking effect anymore. We cannot, we cannot use the narrations. Some other narration come instead of it. Okay? Maybe there is a, it may be a narration that said, do this. And later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His mercy, out of His mercy, He revealed to His Prophet and say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't, they don't have to do it. Okay, so, now, somebody who don't know the other narration, he will still make it on the people obligatory to do that. Because he's ignorant of the thing. Until someone, until someone comes and says, yeah, why, why these people have to do this? Because of hadith. Then he said, but that hadith is abrogated. By what? By another hadith. Oh, so that's why before you speak in the deen, you gotta know at least this is one of the things that should be known. The ulama they said, many other things has to be known. When sisters are in the gatherings and it, uh, and it is time for prayer and no meals are present, how is the prayer conducted? Does everyone stand in one line? Does the more knowledgeable sister lead? Does she stand to the left or in front? Is the iqamah called? Please explain. Inshallah. What I remember for the statements of the ulama and the scholars, and you can find this, alhamdulillah, in the fatawa, Islamiyya, in the fatawa regarding women. On the internet, there is books like that, or we can ask the people of Nal, but what I remember, inshallah ta'ala, I'm not gonna, I don't remember who said it, but what I remember that we ask these questions before, and the people of knowledge, they mentioned that, if the women are in a gathering, they're not in a masjid, and, and they're gathering by themselves, or like a woman in her house with, with other sisters invited, or her daughters, or mother, or cousins, whatever it is, and they're Muslims, they pray together in the jama'ah. And one of them leads them in the salat, but she does not step in the front. She be in the first row, in the middle of the first row. If there is only one row, she be in the middle. If there is more than two rows, she be in that first row. But she doesn't, unlike in the man situation, they step in the front. And of course, inshallah ta'ala, the one that have the Qur'an, 
and she knows the ahkam of the salat, she lead them in the salat. She lead them in the prayer. As for the iqamah, uh, some of the people of Nala, they said that yes, the woman called the iqamah, inshaAllah ta'ala. They called the iqamah. Some of the people of Nala, they even say that they called the adhan. But in a voice that uh, could not be carried on because they, they shouldn't carry, because they're not calling the Muslims just for them. Some other people of Nala, they said it is not upon the, men, the women to call the adhan. It is only for men. And the Adan that is called in the area is enough. So it is like slight difference, but once you go to those books, I told you the Fatawa Islamiya or Fatawa Khan Islam Ibn Uthaymin or the like, you can search on the internet, but as long as you get the search from the ulama of the Sunnah. I'm not saying go on the internet to Google and they give you the Shi'is and the Rafida statements. No, but you want to you know who's saying is it Albani, is it Ibn Uthaymin, is it Fawzan? Is it Rabi? Is it Ubay? Is it Bin Baz? Is it a statement of Imam Ahmed? Who is the statement from? Shaykh al Islam al Taymiyyah and the like, insha'Allah ta'ala. Naam. Alaykum as salam wa Ah, the answers for the questions of last week, Ahsan. Couple of them. First of all, is related, I asked the Sheikh because last week Friday was, uh, was a lot of snow, slushy, slash, sleet, and all that. And it was, uh, and the Sheikh, he said that, yes, it is permissible to combine the Jumu'ah with Asr. As though there is some other opinions or some other people of knowledge that they said no. But he said that which is, uh, the, uh, the, the sound opinion with the Shaykh Ubaid Ta'ala yes it is permissible if there is a hardship upon the people to combine between Jumu'ah and Asr I asked him a question as related to the Imam standing step Shaykh said he stands on top MashaAllah he stands on top MashaAllah this one as well Tayyib Uh, uh, is the talk, Sheikh Muratimi said that the talk between the two sermons is permissible. Is this is any talk? The Sheikh said, no, not any talk. It doesn't mean when the Imam said to, uh, and then before he stand up, people said, how are you doing? What's going on? Look, if there is something that a person has to say to someone, and he couldn't say it while the Imam is giving the khutbah, he can say it at that moment. He can say it at that moment. Something very, very important. No. In between. In between. They say now, it's not permissible to talk while the Imam is giving the first khutbah. And it's not permissible to talk while he's delivering the second part of the khutbah. Between the two khutbah, when he sits, if he sits, sometimes he sits for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, I don't know. At that moment, it is permissible to say something to your friend. I don't know. They pay attention or, or watch out something coming out, whatever. I don't know. Something important. And also we ask that, uh, that the angels, the angels, the angels uh, who write down, who come first, second hour, third, when the Imam comes out, that's it. They sit and listen to their sermon. I said, do they listen to the people of innovations? The innovators when they talk. I asked Sheikh Rabia and Sheikh Rubi. Both of us, kind of, they gave the same, similar, similar. But Sheikh Rubi, he elaborate more. He said, he said that, for, first of all, this is from the things of the unseen. Amor Ghaibiyya, from the unseen. And that this is something that we should not like think much about. We're not, we're not going to benefit from it anyway. They listen, they don't listen. You, you should worry about yourself. Are you listening or you're not listening? Okay? He said, but, inshallah ta'ala, he said, but, however, he said, this text 
that deals with the unseen, we should just leave them, let them go the way we, the way they are. We don't try to go in details in them. He said, but however, if we said that they sit, okay, we continue after that then. So Shaykh Ubaid Hafidahullah Ta'ala he said so he said first of all uh, that which annoy the, the human beings annoy the angels that which disturb and annoy the human beings themselves annoy the angels too and also he said so but if we say that they sit he said that they sit to record against those people to record and to serve as a witness against them for that foolishness and the nurse as they say. And that's, that's it. Now. something like what? Like the Imam says something, hadith, admonishment, says subhanAllah. Hmm. Actually it is permissible to talk while the Imam, uh, but if there is uh, importance, like the hadith of the man who came while the Prophet ﷺ giving a sermon, and while the Prophet ﷺ giving a sermon, this man he spoke to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, halakati al when there was no rain, he said that everything is destroyed, the drought. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send rain upon us when the Prophet sallallahu he make dua. Uh, the people of knowledge, he said, so therefore, the next Friday or maybe after, the same person or some another person stood up while the Prophet sallallahu given the khutbah and make a dua. But this time, O Messenger of Allah, the crops and the animals are dis- being destroyed because there's a lot of rain. The rain did not stop all week. And he would just, that same person or another person said, O Messenger of Allah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, uh, 
to uh, stop the rain. And in the process, we say, Hawalayna la alayna, around us, not on us. And the narrator of the hadith was saying, whenever the Prophet ﷺ moved his hands towards the uh, direction of the clouds, huh? clouds move away them from where they are. Allahu Akbar. And this is from Mu'jizat of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the same hadith, yeah, the, the hadith, yeah, he, he said that before the Prophet ﷺ descends from the minbar, it starts raining. That they see his lihya, that's what the narration say, his lihya, say that the, that the water will come in, dripping from his lihya, his beard, Allah wa no. I don't have the narration in front of me right now. Yeah? Ah, well, I did. Because what happened, I, I just called Sheikh Obeid and I got, got him because it's difficult. I got him and then, and he was busy actually. And he just said, okay, one or two questions, mashallah. So I want to burden the Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. I, I still have them marked over here. The rest of those questions, <coughs> inshallah, ta'ala, that they were not uh, answered. Inshallah, ta'ala, I'm going to find an opportunity. Qayyim? Huh? Inshallah, I'll find an opportunity and, and I ask there is a now, the, the, and that's those things, inshallah. سبحانك اللهم وحمدك شهد الله لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب الله خير بارك الله فيك. This audio file has been recorded and distributed by salafitapes.com. For more information, please contact us at info at salafitapes.com or visit us on our website www.salafitapes.com.